Okay, awesome. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of The Daily Brain. Today I have a fabulous, fabulous lady with me coming to us all the way from the UK. Babs, introduce yourself to the people of The Daily Brain. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Lucinda and you're a psychologist, PhD student Come on! Bristol, <laughs> at the University of Bristol, yes, first year but yeah, ooh, ooh. Lover of series as well Yes, lover of series So the one series we actually watched together is This Is Us We would sit yes. together, we would cry together Yeah Girl, yeah. all those times you came to my crib and we just binged, binge, binge, yeah. binge. So I'm so sad we didn't get to watch um, season four together because you disappeared. Yes. And you went to the UK. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was emotional for myself, just by myself to right? watch. But yeah. Because in a way we, we supported each other. We had therapy sessions together after yes. watching. Yes. Yeah, and you discuss it together and you pause and you, you know, it's actually quite interesting. Yes, maybe we can find a way to watch season five online together because I miss yes. my watching, but you're my watching buddy and I miss having you there with the, remember we used to have like the toilet roll in between us and we just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we both and we both asthmatics or the sinuses and everything is just like acting up <laughs> perfect situation for the both of us we decide to watch the series that's gonna make all our sinuses go haywire sometimes we watch in winter which is even worse yep. i can't i can't so what has been your um experience of watching this is us what have your thoughts been just Share, share, share. Okay, so I'm a person who doesn't cry in real life. Like, I'm not a crier. Um, yeah, so even like funerals and things like that, I don't cry, which is sad. But when I watch series, movies, whatever, any emotional scene, I'm like, I cry. Like, I connect very well. And I think that's like a way of healing or dealing with pain for me. So having a series that is like, this is us, that is dedicated to just crying. Listen, <laughs> and listen. Like, yeah. Listen, that's a whole word. Like, if I was just saying, like, if people don't cry, this is us really i don't know i don't know yeah something is wrong with the emotions yeah like something happened to them so i think this is us is such a good healing um release thing for me like a cleansing i can say mm -hmm. but not only for the crying but the stories um i'm learning a lot about parenting about um dealing with your own issues realizing you have issues and how a lot of people might look like they're functioning mm. but they actually have issues so that's one thing because i mean yes so that's one of the things i think especially with this is us i think some of the characters they you can tell that they have issues and even their lives show it but then other people they have issues but their lives don't show it <laughs> you know except only like too late or something like that so Absolutely. that actually is something that was a learning curve also as a neuropsychologist i mean psychology emotions personal literally issues, i was telling the people issues. they need to put respect on our profession Res respect <laughs> our profession because whoa yes. just yo this is incredible and even just with what you said like how some people's lives don't show that they have it you know their lives are like mm. i have it together but behind closed doors so i think in that for me it's so important not to compare myself to people especially on instagram like you see people's lives and like for example kevin would be a perfect example of how someone's yes. life looks amazing glamorous you know he's got the money he's got the house he's got the cars he's got the women he's got everything a person would yes. need, need per se but his emotional instability is so it's yep. very important to realize and immature yeah and personal like maturity like he's slowly maturing so very, but very he looks like he's got it and people are wishing they were him 
but they have no idea what's going on in their lives. So it's very, I, that's one thing I learned. Hey, don't compare yourself to other people. You don't know. They tend to show you like the good side, <laughs> but you don't know what exactly. they went through. You don't know. So yeah, mm. yeah, that's an excellent, excellent, excellent point. And which character do you say you would relate to the most? So I thought about this hard. Hey, initially I felt like maybe Randall. Then I was like, no, I think. Um, of course not the family <laughs> not the three <laughs> the big three i, I don't <laughs> yeah i don't think i relate with them but i thought beth i think beth okay. i am a beth in life mainly because um supportive resilient strong like i relate to that i was raised by a single oh. mom for a large portion large portion of my life mm. um and also i think also being black <laughs> i don't want to bring race into this but being black i think because of a lot of historical issues um black parents tend to be very tough on their kids yes. which makes the kids also tough so um, i relate to that in that way that beth is very strong and tough and somebody you can rely on and um also recognizes issues but also i think the other thing is she can be to some extent uh, sacrificial self sacrificial because she's very strong so she is able to handle another person's pain and um like Randall's pain and sacrifice her own happiness to in order to help Randall so mm. i think that's something that i know i myself i can be that person i think i've done it before mm. you know where you, because you you just keep you know hanging on holding on supporting being there um even when you're not really happy but because you're not a quitter you don't give up you so beth yeah and i love that because while that is an amazing like attribute to have sometimes it really can be like to your detriment and i really do love the growth that was shown in beth specifically through season 3 where we were like oh my gosh is this couple going to break <laughs> up because for once jess um, uh, beth is not bending backwards because that's the yes. only reason why their relationship worked most of the time because she, she just, was the compromiser <laughs> she compromised everything and for once like there was tension because she wouldn't compromise and for me like in that moment i was like mm, maybe i don't like randall so much yes <laughs> right because in season 1 and 2 you're just like oh randall oh randall you're amazing <laughs> then season 3 and 4 i'm like who is this guy like i was so stressed so 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 yeah. stressed Like yes, was it like, was tense. Yeah. It was so <laughs> tense, especially because they kind of alluded to the fact that Randall and Beth may not be together and then season mm. finale you see that they end up making it. But like I was like, "Hmm, Randall, Randall is flawed in ways that we didn't even notice or see." Yes. No, mm-hmm. he pretends to be strong. That's the thing. He is on the other words, Beth is actually strong. Ooh. Randall pretends to be strong. Ooh. He acts strong. Doesn't this deal is... with issues. Things is dealing but he's not. He's just putting on a show of I've got this. Mm. And in my like in my previous episode I just talked about how he has this control issues actually. Because, and the thing is like when you have so much control issues you have no way of compromising and that's what we saw he didn't want to compromise he thinks yeah. everything has to be his way or the by way and i think that's why him and Ke- kevin clash so much because everyone else has accommodated him in life his mom accommodated him his dad accommodated <laughs> him um kate beth, does kate accommodated beth and i think it's that that sorrow of uh you're adopted so we'll give you everything that you want where is kevin and, and also and also smart like he is smart so people tend to just fall especially i think in the light of kate kate has got she's just like okay randall knows what's best mm, randall mm. even the mom's like because he seems smart and everything but being smart doesn't mean that you actually also good with people mm. and you know what's best for other people this is very true um i think for me who i relate to is a mix between beth and kate beth 
I like for me, I'm not I'm not a, a person who necessarily bends over to a comment. No. What we we're, we're not going to do that, you know. I'm very clear about but I I had to grow in that. I'm very clear about what I want. Nobody's going to stop me and I will compromise, but you must also compromise. So, I think but with strength, resilience, all those kind of things, I think I relate to that. But also with Kate, where you ignore like for me if i'm stressed i eat i relate to her in that way so much like just this idea of food makes you better feel better and stuff so i can definitely relate to kate in that way um where sometimes you just don't deal with your issues you just eat and i think she did yep. that for years and now it's yes. got into a place where she's just like ah I'm so insecure, I'm self-conscious, what I want. So I think with the, I relate with Kate in that way a little bit. Were you going to say something? I was saying I wanted to say that I feel like we need I think um we need more of Kate's story. There's a huge chunk of Kate's life that is missing. I absolutely um, agree with that. Mm. Because I also think that we've gotten a full sense of who, maybe that's what season 5 will do. We've gotten a full sense of Randall. We've gotten a full sense of of Kevin and his struggles but we haven't really gotten that from Kate and fully yes. seeing how she how she she's dealt with things we've gotten like back stories here and there but you're right i think it would be very nice for them to explore Kate a little more because i mean really with the um with season 4 and seeing her her ex boyfriend wow this dude <laughs> i was shocked I couldn't believe yeah. this story. I was like, what is happening right now? What and then Kate Kate developed daddy issues after the dad died and also because they were like very close. So she was willing to accept whatever crumbs of love from that terrible mm. boyfriend of hers. He was terrible, honestly. Jeez. So the terrible person period. Honestly, he was and just like what's wrong with you that you're so abusive? I mean, obviously he must come from i don't know what's happening in his life but wow that took us for right and so out of like when you think of this is us like what would you say was the storyline that you really loved that was tevela like whether it be the deja storyline or i don't know the Ke- kevin so which storyline would you say you you like well be? i'm a big romance person so of course jake and rebecca like Hi. i mean that just that trumps everything like their I love mean, story is beautiful it's it's magical <laughs> I mean despite the problems I mean they actually had lots of problems but they dealt with it d- dealt with it and they always came back to love like they were and they were understanding of each other like that's the one thing like that I like like they understood each other I think a lot of times people in relationships don't even care to really understand the person um but they did like um for example I think I remember when the kids the babies were too much when they came and then Rebecca really asked more from um Jack and he you know he listened and they helped each other out i mean even through the whole singing when she <laughs> eventually had to stop it and all of it like they used to like understand and listen to each other and i like how Jack showed up for his family i mean of course it just made it look like i think it was a huge took a huge toll on him being a breadwinner even though he was too strong to admit it because he was too proud but i mean if you look at most of the time most of the as much as he was happy he had like just some underlying sadness and <laughs> 100% you know? i don't think so, jack was fully happy I think him starting Big 3 Homes his company would have gotten him there. I really do think yeah. it would have gotten yes. him. Yes, he's cut to, Yes, his life was cut short definitely. Mm-hmm. 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 But he he showed up for his family like no matter what he was there. I mean, he quit drinking, he did like I mean, he he's actual goals in terms of um a father, a husband, mm-hmm. a person actually. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and he tried to be everything opposite to what he grew up with he actively tried to do that but do you remember that 
actually Jack's father for maybe the first few years of their lives was actually a good guy. I don't know if you remember the scene where he was so loving, he was so caring. Maybe it's when Nikki grew up and, and was a little bit older that the father just turned. But I also think that alcohol. Yes, alcohol, <laughs> alcohol. of course. But I think mm. that Jack had a moment in his life where he saw where he saw what Happiness. good, yes, good mm. father would look like. So it wasn't just like it came out of nowhere. And he he yeah. knew what a good father was like and he saw that shift. You know what I mean? And so mm. I think he decided I want to be you know this good father of which he was he was an incredible incredible father such he was so incredible that his death messed up his whole family <laughs> listen <laughs> it was too I've, good <laughs> i've never seen such an impactful but i also think to a certain extent his family like the kids just didn't work on themselves enough to heal no, I think he has that too, but I also think that the like comes back to how strong he was. He was too strong and carried all of their problems. Mm. So when he left, everything came out. That was the main thing. I mean, he helped Kate. Like Kate, like didn't even like the mom, you know. So would always go to the dad for mm. any any sort of problem. Randall, I mean, he had to teach Randall to run, to do stuff, you know, to you know release anxiety. Kevin, he he just was there and was the only person they could count on for every single thing. Mm. Even the mm. wife, like when she had problems, Jake would do this. Jake would help. Like, oh, so you did nothing. So, I, whoa, 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 who did nothing? I was saying, Rebecca, like, she no. was there, yes, but I feel like she, she I don't know. I no, like guys, I disagree. Lied. I literally spoke about this in what, like, my second episode, and I talk about how Rebecca, I think because of the way Jack is, and everything that he does was grandiose, it may have, like, um, over diminished sh- it, it yes. diminished her, but that lady did the absolute <laughs> did, most. Yeah, 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 she did. I think, yeah, I think, that and I think, exactly like to a say. certain extent, what we do is when a father shows up, you know, and when a father's good, we, we congratulate tend, them. Thank you. We tend to overpraise <laughs> them when they're doing or what doing mothers the- normally do. No, no, Rebecca was a super mom. And I will give her all the credits that I can give Mm. anybody. I think it's just because Jack was such an incredible father. We're not used to seeing fathers like this. We tend to overpraise it. If anything, that's how fathers should be. Yeah, true, true. And especially with with three kids, with one who's adopted of a different race and all of that. I think, yeah, actually now coming back to that when that time when she the babies were born and she she came through like 100 percent, you know and he and was she held the, the house down from beginning to when she to started end, yeah. career which would have been a good 16 17 years she held that house down. she even sacrificed her career for those listen, kids so actually yeah listen so we need to put respect on Rebecca's we name. We do. Yeah. It's just here. Yeah, Jack like overpowers <laughs> and overshadows everyone. I mean, like for yeah. real. <laughs> for real. And so what do you what would you like to see? Or what are your predictions for season five? Of course, I would like to see I think more stuff happened to Kate after I think during that whole late teens, twenties and mm. stuff. I think things are gonna happen. I wanna see that. Um what else let me ask you this let me ask you this do you think um randall and kevin can come back from this fight that they had yes i think so really i think so mainly because of somehow deep down there's a bond somewhere Mm. even though i mean from the beginning when we watched that i think kevin always kind of had a soft spot for for randall even though he tried to hide it and project negative vibes 
he actually did because if you see there's always like tiny little clips of him showing up for Rando more mm. than Rando actually did I think Rando is the one who hates Kevin <laughs> actually like he actually does even though he pretends he doesn't but he actually whereas Kevin acts like he doesn't like Rando but he actually, actually cares actually okay. um, because I'm just thinking of do you remember there was a scene where they fast forwarded to Thanksgiving the next year where Kevin says, you know, Randall and I aren't talking. So they haven't spoken yeah. for basically eight to nine months. Somewhere there. So I'm just That's like... That's fine. Is it? For those two, dude, remember how they hated each other? Like, remember mm-hmm. season one when it started? Like, they were, like, estranged. Like, they just were not. This you is know? True. But who showed up again? Kevin showed up for Randall. That's his thing. Even though Rando acts like he's the strong one, he's the one who can handle everything, you know, he's got it together. But I think he's very unforgiving. Like Kevin has, mm. not Kevin, uh, Rando has this um, black or white thing. Either it's black or it's white. And if you don't fall in those, you just cancel. He cancels people. Mm, mm, people mm. And thinks he's better because he's got his own stand. Applies, actually, he applies the standards on people. Mm. But so maybe Kevin, him going to therapy will help even though he's super resistant in uh, random super resistant because he thinks it's perfect of course <laughs> of course and that episode was just uh, that's why i say put respect on psychologists i love how that episode where he shows the two alternative routes of where yes, yes. and everything at the end just is perfect and it's you know in random's yeah. world how is it in your world your father doesn't die you still go to that university where you meet beth and you still marry yeah. and have the same kids Randall R- Randall <laughs> <laughs> it's unrealistic it's so unrealistic yep. yeah he he lives in his own fantasy world but I, I guess I think given what has happened to him he was abandoned mm. um, you know mm. his mom was a junkie he never got to know his actual first family movie. and his and he, he later on finds out that he could have known his dad at least for a very long exactly, time exactly exactly so he needs things to be perfect he needs mm, happiness so mm. he thinks happy thoughts he wants to control life to produce happiness because mm. things that happened to him initially you know were out of his control mm. like a lot of people people two I'm three people actually messed three people messed up his childhood mm. you know like determined the course of his life without him so he really needs to control how everything, everything else, else like yes yeah and how do you think oh i must say i really loved um how they showed um baby jack's little sister when she rocked up at him giving birth later later on, like his wife giving birth later then you realize that toby and kate end up adopting a baby girl mm. i'm so excited to see that and also Me remember too. in season three they were showing older beth no 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 older Tess being a social worker. Yes. You remember that? That I, is I, exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to see Very how exciting. It, and also does he end up does Kevin end up marrying Madison? I think he does, man. Like I think that they fit like a glove. Like I don't think so. He's not love. in a not in a like yeah, I mean he's obsessed with that other woman like so please with that's his a- first But I feel like, like, I mean, sometimes you, I don't know, like, it's complicated. I don't want him to have this whole raising this kid with this woman, but married to this other, you know what I mean? Raising mm, these kids, right? It's twins. Mm, mm. You know, I, I, but that's just me projecting, being, pulling a Randall, wanting things to just work out <laughs> and be perfect. <laughs> pulling a Randall, but, that's a new, that's yeah. a new one. <laughs> projecting happiness and yes, you know into and the future con- but and controlling everything controlling but i don't know i feel like it looked as if they kind of semi closed the chapter with uh, the other woman and i think that girl is actually quite likable like i don't know like but about I mean, madison yeah but i but i mean for love love to develop i mean they might actually go on that journey during this pregnancy where they fall for each other that has happened mm. for people and i mean mm. it's twins man who wants to be co-parenting twins <laughs> boys. boys boys 
I think so. Okay, awesome. Listen to Wait, last one last thing, one, one last, last thing. thing. I'm exci- I'm excited for Deja and is it Malik's Malik. So, we didn't even oh, We didn't even uh, talk about that. How do you feel about her dating somebody who, who's a baby father? The issue is, you know what the issue is here? Yeah. They manipulated us. They played with our feelings. They first showed Malik and how awesome he is, the oh. dad and his mm-hmm. lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Then they brought Deja in. So we can't be like, hell no, he's got a child. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they, they played on our feelings. They are. Like, because, as, as, because as a Mal- person, he's likable. As a father, he's like, like everything that date, is fine. That date that he created for Deja where he took her basically to the place where her mom took her as a child and just he's like a, he's like him he's, honestly he, and he's the dude who made a mistake but owned up he could have given up that child for adoption could have begged forced that chick or whatever to abort like people do that you know but he's showing up but again he's doing the bare minimum we can't congratulate people for doing the bare minimum 100% <laughs> <laughs> And also, like, how are you as a... How old is Deja? 13, 14, 15? Whatever. As a 15-year-old, becoming a whole stepmother. That's stressful. But I... It's stressful, but I think that... I don't... I feel like they can work it out. They could. I think they could. Them them actually just taking the step to even date and like each other is... Especially for Deja, it's showing that element of unconditional love and growth which is very deep and growth yeah because deja i think deja is one of the the few people who has shown a tremendous growth yes and she's tremendous. not getting credit i don't understand why people no, are she's not not. her no and we will credit her today deja <laughs> you have grown tremendously she's had a traumatic childhood she really has Absolutely. and she has grown tremendously in in the most beautiful way even though she went and cut her hair with scissors and she and the car thing and the car thing she used the bats to hit up a whole car mm. whatever but she really has grown she really has how how sad was it when her mom showed up all oh, perfect in life is rocking i was heartbroken it's like why couldn't you do that for me mm. no that's hurtful but that's what i love about this show it's just real it's raw these are emotions you know usually when you watch something to escape reality no you are diving even more <laughs> into reality honestly so this show is incredible so true shout out to the writers shout out to the actors everybody is just acting their butts off this feels real this feels like the yes. the pearsons are next door and i could just be like you know and i love <laughs> the storytelling intergenerational story to everything yes about this show is and it's unpredictable mm. i love mm. the unpredictable like i can actually i can't actually tell you what's gonna happen like i can't even i just i'm waiting to be shocked and surprised and because we that's life life is yeah. unpredictable we would have never thought that jack would die after going in saving the dog coming out yeah <laughs> you know we thought he was gonna die in the fire, in the fire. <laughs> i also thought he was gonna die in the fire so kudos to the writers of this is us i think we have two more seasons i i remember watching an interview saying there were only these six seasons they wrote up to six seasons to complete the story so um, ah, amazing i love people that do that that's intentional CNN. intentional yes yes it's perfect anyway listen thank you so much for joining me in this conversation Welcome. today psychologist to psychologist we're bringing the people of the daily bread some healthy mental insights i love it um guys don't forget to um subscribe like do all the things and i'll see you guys in the next episode bye <laughs>